Well, time to begin. I can see I'm on the right project, Western Australian Lantern Pop Art, start a project by Code Club Australia. A few little clues here that will help me know what I'm going to code today. Uh, we're going to be using a green flag to start the code running, and we're going to be clicking on a Chinese lantern to change the pop art. Sounds like fun. Let's click on the remix button to begin. Okay, so before I even begin, I just want to set myself up so I know what's on my screen. I can see in the editor here, I've got my first sprite. There's only one sprite in this project, so that tells me that all of my code is going to go onto this one. And it's just a plain white background because our sprite is going to clone itself and cover the whole background. Our first step is to start cloning the sprite. So we know from the beginning of the project that was going to begin when the green flag is clicked. So that's the start of my first algorithm. Now in this one, it is really important that we get the locations absolutely spot on. So we've got minus 125 on the X axis and 30 on the Y axis to begin. And once it's there, we want it to create a clone of itself. So that's our first part. The code that we're creating here is going to set the sprite across the stage, cloning itself. So we've got it in its first position. We actually now need to repeat three times the next piece of code. Each clone that comes along, I actually want them to look a little bit different. So in the looks menu, we're going to tell it to change its color effect. I'm going to choose by 40. This is one of those times where you could change it to what you would like. I'm also going to ask it to change X by 120 because it's 120 wide. Make sure you get change X by, don't put set X to because that will put it in the one spot. We want to change X. And then within that repeat function, it needs to be able to create another clone before it goes back and repeats. So here we're telling it the first sprite, go to 100 minus 12530, create one clone. And with that clone that's created, change the color, move it across the screen and then create another one. And we're gonna go back and do that two more times. So let's click our flag to see what happens. Fantastic, exactly what I was looking for. Each of my clones is a different lot of color thanks to that change effect block. And that change X block has meant that every time the clone shows up, it's moved 120 across the X axis. Our job now is to create more clones. So we need to make a row of clones that will go across the middle and another set that will go across the bottom. So to do this, we actually are going to recreate this first part of the algorithm. So you've got two choices here. You can drag your blocks across again, or you can do like I'm going to do, I like the easy way. I'm going to right click on my code and duplicate that block of code and drop it underneath. So now I've got a much longer algorithm, but the second lot, I'm going to change the details so that I have got the next lot. So on the next lot, I need X to start at minus 125 again, which is over the side here, but this time Y is going to be minus 30. So it's moving down the screen into the middle here. It's going to create a clone of itself. It is going to change the color effect by 40. And it is going to change X by 120 and repeat that another three times. So let's check out our code now. Excellent. We should have eight going across the screen. So you should be able to figure out what we're going to do again now to create the third row of clones along the bottom. I'm going to duplicate that block of code again and add it to the bottom. And this time 
I am still starting with minus 125 over on the far left. Instead of minus 90, I've got minus 210, sorry, 210. Create the clone and repeat that same pattern again. Let me click the green flag and see what I get. Fantastic. Hope you got the same. 12 clones across our screen ready to go. And I can see that they've changed colors. We have started to replicate though, but that's fine with what I'm doing. So if I zoom out on my code, I've got quite a long algorithm here. Pretty simple one to create though, because we were just repeating, reusing some blocks of code, but changing the details within to make it what we want. So the second part now is to do when the user clicks on a lantern, they're actually going to change colors. So the art is engaging. So let's start with the event when this sprite is clicked. Now, we're going to do a broadcast here. So let's create a new message and we're going to use party. Once that broadcast is set up, let us start with the event when I receive broadcast or when I receive party. Um, I'm going to change colors, but I don't want it to do anything too plain. So let's go and select our change color effect. I'm going to put it by 30. Okay, I'm going to run my code and I click on a sprite. Each time I click on the sprite, it's changing the colors, which means that the person using your game can be the artist. They can select when they're happy with the color selection and leave it there. I want mine to be a bit more engaging though. So I'm actually going to go and add a repeat block and wrap it around that change color one. So now, ooh, there's lots of flashes of color before it settles on its final one. The cool thing with art is that it's up to the user about how they want it to look and how they want to finish theirs. You could, let's make it big screen, a person could choose to print this out and frame it and hang it on their walls. You could save it as a background screensaver for your computer. There's lots of things that you can do with your art. Well, congratulations, you have finished the coding project for today. Now your job is to think about how can you change and adapt the project to make it your very own. Perhaps you are going to go and change the sprite, turn it into something that you would like to see that can be replicated. If you're going to do that, here are some tips and tricks from me. If I jump into my sprite and into its costumes, you need to have a sprite that is going to fit within the square or you're going to take some time to actually find something that replicates the right size to fit within your screen. Take the time to add some detail to it, but to also keep that image quite simple. If you have too much detail, there's too much color and you lose its effectiveness. If you wanna have a different go at this project, we have a very similar pop-up project that uses Melbourne Cup horses as Victoria is currently competing against Western Australia to see which state is going to win the code of origin for this term. Well, coders, thanks for joining me for another Code Along. Hope you've got a great project. Don't forget to save your work. It's really important that we take a moment up the top on your screen to give it a name that reflects what you have done, not just start a remix. Make sure you save your work. If you have an online account, you can save it into your account. If you are going to save to your computer, simply click on File, Save to your computer, and it's now in your Downloads folder. And you can now take it from your Downloads folder and pop it into the correct folder on your laptop so you can find it again.
If you have parent permission, we'd love for you to share your projects back with us. Don't forget to place your vote for the Code of Origin. We can't wait to see you try some other projects and have some fun along the way. Happy coding, everyone.